Tell us about your involvement with the Topeka art scene. Uh, well, I moved to Topeka um, about 15 years ago, and I've always been into the arts and photography, drawing, um, writing, the literary arts. Um, so when I got here, I was enrolled at Washburn. I think that's where a lot of people's story begins with the arts is at Washburn. Um, and yeah, and, and just really became immersed in a community of, of amazing poets and writers and artists. And um, I kind of looked around and saw that the art scene wasn't quite visible yet um, and decided that I wanted to do my part in, in making that more visible. And um, I got involved in publishing. Um, I was editor-in-chief of 785 Magazine for many years. and. Um, I also started XYZ Magazine, which was for parents, and a and &E Magazine for parents. Um, and I've done a lot of things over the years just to, um, to try and put in a little bit of effort to make it a better place to live. And so I, I do want to get to uh, Microburst as well, because you're nominated basically in two categories for projects that you're working on here. So congratulations, double time. Yeah, there. that was confusing, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it figured out. Do <laughs> you want to take just a second to talk a little bit about Microburst? Sure. Um, let's see, it's been over a year now since uh, I started. Um, I kind of, my time working as, as a publisher and editor for commercial magazines was sort of coming to an end and I was starting working full time as the communications editor for the library and I thought, you know, um, back when I was eight years old and I was cutting things up and pasting them together with my hands, like I'd like to get back at some point to that um, more visceral, more tangible art um, where I'm creating something with my hands and, and, and forming something that's lot less commercial. It has no advertisements. It has no agenda other than to spread the word and to, to enlighten and inform. Um, and I had a couple of friends at the time, Dave Lowenstein and Ashley Laird, who were all about it and they just really um, they just really buoyed me on the subject and said, you, you ought to do this. And um, I had other friends who showed me, you know, here's some funding that you can get. And before I knew what happened, I had this grant, and I was like, okay, now it's real, and I have to do this. Yeah, right. so tell us, how did you get here? Well, and that's the book that most folks want to hear about. So uh -huh. um, I, used, I was living in Fort Collins, Colorado in 2007, mm -hmm. working at a retirement community, and Joe and his wife were our first residents that moved in to one of our cottages. One of my co-workers found out that Joe was a Holocaust survivor, and a few uh, days later, Joe has a tattoo that runs the length of his arm, which is his number from the book, mm -hmm. 34207. And I saw a little portion of it peeking out from behind his sleeve. He keeps it covered always. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about it, and he said, it's from Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. so this is a little longer than the elevator speech, but mm -hmm. it is no, interesting. This is good. It's a, it's a tall building. <laughs> That's right. It's very tall. <laughs> We'll go up and down a few times. But anyway, so that was uh, 2007, and I asked him if our daughter could interview her, interview him for one of her history classes, mm -hmm. and he said, never. I will mm. never talk about it. Mm. So I just assumed that Joe had been like most of the Holocaust survivors that I had heard of in my life that spoke at schools and shared their story. I didn't realize that, uh, that Joe had, in over 70 years, never told anyone really his whole story. Even his family knew just bits and pieces. Yeah. So that was 2007. I let it go, uh, but fell in love with Joe. You can't not fall in love with Joe. He's mm -hmm. the most gregarious, loving, kind man. And we stayed really close, And but I never asked him about it again. Mm -hmm. And several years later, uh, I, my husband and I moved to Topeka. Mm -hmm. We were back visiting. Uh, Colorado. I was back in the retirement community driving down the street. I saw Joe walking down the street. I pulled my car over. He poked his head in the car window and out of the blue said, Nancy, I want to tell you my story.